Sadie's been with me for seven months now. Can you believe it's been seven months already? She's almost a year old. And a lot of you have had a lot of questions about her, about how I train her, about what I feed her. So in today's video, I'm going to answer all the questions I'm getting the most about my lovely little <laughs> companion, including her favorite treats. We'll talk about her favorite treats. So stay tuned. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find her own. A lot of you who've been when with me for a while know that I've kind of been through some tough times with my puppy companions. I lost Capone almost two years ago. Yeah, actually next month will be two years. And, uh, and then I had a new puppy and he got sick and died. I only had him, I think, not even a month. And uh, so Sadie came into my life about seven months ago. I got her last February and I'm going to talk all about her today. Uh, number one, let's talk about where she came from. She is a rescue. She came from Kanab, Utah, Best Friends Animal Society. I went and got her there. When I got her, they had labeled her as a black lab cattle dog mix and as many of you who've been watching us for a while know who knows what she is there's a lot of different things she looks like she could have some shepherd in her she looks like she could have some kelpie in her uh, she looks like she could have australian stumpy tail cattle dog i uh, look that up she looks like that she put when she puts her ears back she looks like a doberman so she is black with the white white markings that make me think border collie but she's got a brown undercoat so there's some brown in there and her brother was brown brindle so that could be any number of things i'm thinking she's lab she definitely has a lab face when her ears are down lab and border collie i even saw an aussie recently an australian shepherd that looked just like her same eyes same ears but she's got those signature ears so i don't know but your guess is as good as mine yeah i could do a dna test and maybe eventually i will but it kind of doesn't matter i don't know we'll see maybe someday we'll do a dna test and uh, her birthday, when I got her, they said she was about four months old. So I'm going to make her birthday October 31st, I think. I'm going to make her a Halloween baby. And maybe we'll even dress her up. So stay tuned for that. We'll see. <laughs> maybe we'll have a cute costume. She's off sniffing. I'd love to have her sitting next to me through the whole video, but there's just way more interesting, exciting things going on. And a lot of you have been wondering what I feed Sadie. Now, remember, I live on the road full time. I don't always... Uh, travel to big cities and big towns so I had to choose a food for her that number one is healthy and is safe and what I think is going to be the best solution for her but I also had to choose something that I was going to be able to find no matter where I go and so I opted for blue buffalo wild blue buffalo grain free that I can get at Walmart and like I said I can't I've looked at different foods and they actually rank pretty high on the food grader I'll put a I'll put it here I'll put a link right here so if you're not watching look here if you're curious there's a there's a pet food grader that I've always used for all of my dogs dating dating, dating back to JT 15 years ago and they rank it at least four out of five stars so i know some of you said please don't feed blue buffalo because it's been recalled almost every dog food almost everything we eat has been recalled at one point or another and for consistency in her diet i had to make sure it was something that i was going to be able to get no matter where i am and there's pretty much always a walmart and uh, blue buffalo grain free for now or sometimes I buy the grain I'm not convinced about the whole grain free I am convinced about corn I don't like to feed her corn but sometimes I buy her stuff with like brown rice in it I don't mind brown rice healthy healthy grains I think are okay but fillers like corn no in fact every once in a while she'll get one of my corn chips because I'm addicted to corn chips and I, I think she starts itching after she eats corn chips so yeah, I'm pretty confident about the food that I'm feeding her. I'm pretty confident that it's a high quality food, that she's getting all the nutrients and everything that she needs to be a strong, healthy pup. And so as long as we're talking about food, why don't we talk about treats? These happen to be her favorite treats, but I try to feed her healthy, all natural treats as much as I can. These are her absolute favorites. They're sweet potato and duck. And what I love about these is they come pretty long and so when I just take a few of these when we're on a walk and there's just sweet potato so I'll bite it off and just give her little pieces when we're training on walks see she loves these these are her favorites um, I also give her uh, 
turkey jerky or duck jerky or something like that. She really likes that. And one thing to be really careful about, a lot of the jerkies, and I, told, and I bought these early on totally by mistake, they have sugar in them. I think these have molasses. And the last thing I need for an already really active dog is for her to be hyped up on sugar. <laughs> so uh, be careful, make sure you read labels. I'm gonna put links to all her favorite treats in the video description so that you can get them on Amazon. But I really do, again, try to give her all natural, the best, sometimes human grade food and or human grade treats and things like that. I just really want to make sure I feed her the best so that she stays healthy. A lot of you have commented on her shiny coat and that's the blue buffalo that I feed her and all the healthy treats and uh, yeah. And I've talked before about training her. <laughs> can we, can we sit down? Oh, here, why don't we sit down on my lap? And I've talked and I've talked before about training her, training, I, I, I take training, hi, what do you think? I know I'm talking. How about I take training her very seriously. We train constantly. I want her to be a happy, healthy dog. I want her to be as free as she can. A couple of the resources that I have used, can you sit? Sit. I don't think she likes this wire bench very much. Sit. Yeah, she can't sit. <laughs> if she sits, she'll fall off the bench. Uh, but so for training her every morning, I still, well, it, when I'm not too busy, when we're not on the road, travel, sometimes it gets a little hard. But I hand feed her handfuls of kibble for her training and for her breakfast. That's what we do. So we kind of go through a routine of sit, stay, and we're trying to expand that now really working on her distractions especially when we're around other people when we're in public train her every opportunity I get but I also make sure she gets plenty of free time and exercise it's really important for her to get exercise and mental stimulation that's why I hand feed her in the morning because she needs as much she needs mental stimulation as much as she needs physical exercise to keep her out of trouble she's really come a long way she doesn't get on the counter anymore she doesn't get on the stove anymore and and all of that I can contribute to being consistent with her spending a lot of time with her making sure she's stimulated physically and mentally and the birds agree and uh, so the training resources I use for her are Zach's dog training YouTube videos and McCann's I, I I've actually found like leash pulling and things like that some really really good videos McCann has a very different approach to how they teach you how to train your dog as opposed to Zach and Zach is who I watched when I had Huck a lot so those are the two resources that I have used the most recently I, I was diligent about training my dogs way back to when I had my first dog as an adult JT. He was a 100 pound rot chow mix and I knew that he was going to be a huge responsibility so back then it was Cesar Chavez who no not Cesar Chavez but Cesar Milan the dog whisperer who uh, uh, is kind of debunked he's not they don't they his method of training isn't popular anymore the whole alpha thing has been debunked for example but go ahead and check out those i'll put links in the video description so that you can check them out too as far as vet care we have a vet in our in our home base area that i took her to to get her shots that's where we're going to go to get her follow-up rabies and everything when we go back and then just recently uh i was paranoid and so I had to take her to the vet. I thought her gums were too pale. And it was me just being paranoid because that's what happened. I thought she was gagging. She's chasing, she's wishing she could chase ducks. There's cactus here, so I had to be really careful. She already stepped on one. But uh, yeah, when Capone was dying, yeah, he was bleeding internally and his gums got really pale. And so um, I was, I, I really just kind of spun out on her gums a little bit. So I just took her, I just called a vet in town near the town I was at, took her in and he was like, no, her gums are fine. You're fine. So on the road, if I need to take her to the vet for whatever care, I just always make sure I carry all her vet, vet records with me. And so that they, if I do have to go to a vet 
anywhere across the country, they kind of know her history. So just make sure you carry all the vet records. She is up to date on all her rabies shots. I think she's due again in February. That would make sense. And she is chipped. Yes, she is microchipped. Many of you have asked that. And she is spayed. She came chipped and spayed from Best Friends Animal Society. They do all that You before you get the dog. It's kind of like... Um, you know they just automatically do it no matter how old the dog is they do it so i got her four months old she was already spayed which is a little young you know they want to make sure that they do their part to control the unwanted pet population uh i guess as far as exercise i do let her run around now once i get comfortable in an area i did hear coyotes last night but she, i have discovered that if we're in a new area that she isn't really comfortable in she stays really close i did buy her a tracker i'll talk about that in another video i'm still kind of learning how to use it uh, to see where she goes but i try to let her run i play fetch with her a couple times a day we go for a walk at least once or twice a day and we do the training in the morning when I feed her. You know, her breakfast is a training session. And then we train throughout the day whenever there's an opportunity that comes up. So uh, make sure she gets, like I said, plenty of, of exercise and mental stimulation. And a lot of you have asked me about rattlesnake aversion training. I don't have any plans to do that right now. I'm usually only in the desert in the winter when the rattlesnakes aren't really out. The rattlesnake that I saw last year uh, that came into my camp, and if you didn't see that video, I'll put a link up here. It, uh, it, I, the only reason I saw that is because I was in the desert way later than I expected to be. I don't know. I might think about that a little bit more. We'll see. The the uh, pandemic really kind of changed all my plans for socializing her and training her but we'll see maybe we will do some uh, rattlesnake aversion therapy the rattlesnake shot from what i saw it buys you a little bit of time i don't know I, in my opinion i i weighed you know the benefit and the cost and i i just not the cost like the my financial cost but just the you know giving her another shot i i just decided it wasn't worth it I know like my friend Bob's dog Cody has run wild and free for what seven years he's never had a problem I I've been hiking like crazy I don't know she is very active we'll see I I don't know how I feel about that yet we'll see when I get to the desert because I can't imagine I have to keep her uh, leashed up the whole time we're in the desert but I also have cactus to worry about in the desert so I'll see when I get there and and make a decision then and as far as like the vaccine, I, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, so don't, you know, don't take this as me being an anti-vaxxer. But when Capone passed away, and I ended up in the emergency room because I was having chest pains, and if you want to see that, I'll put the link here. Uh, the doctor said, wow, a lot of dogs are dying of cancer. It's really weird. It just seems like a lot of dogs are dying of cancer. And that just got me thinking about the food that we feed them. Yeah, I try to find the best food, but who knows? And all of the extra medications and preventatives that we give them. I really never gave Capone heartworm medicine because we were mostly in dry climates, not a lot of mosquitoes. Uh, so but when i went to the south i did i took him in for a heartworm test and he did go on heartworm so i pretty much only put him on heartworm as needed and now i'm even rethinking the the tick and flea treatment for sadie i know there's a, a, a an oral that you can give them i always did frontline on all my dogs before and i do have frontline in there now but i'm just starting to think about I think about all the chemicals I put in my body and I try to just be all natural with everything I put in my body so why wouldn't I think that about Sadie as well I'm not gonna give her a bunch of extra stuff just for the in case and I feel that way about the heartworm medicine I feel I I feel that way about the flea and tick and I feel that way about the rattlesnake um, vaccine why give her a whole bunch of stuff that could like really cause long-term damage just for the what if. And a lot of people are probably gonna disagree with me and argue with me on that and call me names and, and whatever. That's my choice. You make the choices you need to make to make you feel better in your life. And this is what uh, I feel is best for me and my dog. Uh, giving her things on an as needed basis. I will take her in once a year and get a heartworm test just to make sure if she does get heartworm, it's treatable. That's the thing. Everything is treatable. Even if she gets fleas or gets a tick bite, uh, well, 
Lyme disease is so rare. I mean, everything is just so rare. I think that we as a society are so trained to be afraid of and to try to prevent everything because the pharmaceuticals want to sell us their stuff that we go into preventative mode without thinking about the real risk behind that or what the risk of the preventative is, right? So I err on the side, you know me, if anybody who's watched me for a while, you know that I err on the side of taking risks. And I don't know, I think there's risks in both. I think that if I keep giving her a bunch of crap and chemicals that she doesn't need, at, at this point in our lives, in my experience with her, I think that's a higher risk than constantly putting, in her, putting her on all these preventatives. So that's where I stand on the front, on front line, on flea and tick, on heartworm. If I were living in the south, east, if I were living in, an, in a climate and I was spending a lot of time in a climate where there were a lot of mosquitoes all the time, I would put her on heartworm, but I'm not, so it doesn't make sense. And the mosquito or the uh, rattlesnake thing, again, a lot of this is fluid. You know, I could change my mind tomorrow, and maybe I will, but right now this is these are the choices that I'm making for Sadie and me. And uh, I think that's everything. I think I covered all the questions that you have had. Oh, oh, actually one more question I just saw recently on the Friendly Nation Facebook page was what do people who have dogs do with their dogs on hot days when they need to shop? And I've talked about this before. One of the benefits of an RV is it's made out of fiberglass. It's not a steel box. It doesn't get as hot as a van. I generally try to avoid hot climates anywhere, anyway. It was 84 degrees in my rig yesterday and I was dying. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, it's too hot. So I don't generally try to be in places that are extremely hot. I spent the summer at 10,000 feet in Colorado. It never got higher than 84, 85 degrees in my rig and it was usually around high 70s and if I do end up in a hot climate I will number one do my shopping in the morning and before it gets too hot make sure I park in the shade make sure I park my the hot you know so that the sun isn't beating down in the windshield of my RV and I can also turn on my fantastic fan to keep things moving in there to try to keep the air from getting too hot and then I just make my my trips in the store as fast as possible. Uh, yeah, if you live in a van and you're on 100 degree temperatures and you've got a dog, you've got a problem. You can't leave a dog in a van in 100 degrees, you just can't. There was one time with Capone, uh, I was able to attach him to a post outside the store and leave him outside the store while I went in rather than leave him in the RV. Sadie's not there yet. That's something I need to train her on. And that's a risk too. People do it all the time, but I don't know. I would worry about somebody stealing my dog or something. But she just right now, I don't think is ready for that as far as having me out of sight and uh, you know tied up to a strange pole in a strange place. Again, that's got to be part of her socialization. And the socializing has uh, suffered because of COVID. I'm going to be honest. We just spent the last four days in a campground, and I realize we have a lot of work to do on the socializing. I mean, she's great. She loves people, but that's the problem. She wants to jump all over everybody. And she's territorial, so she barks at people walking by the rig and stuff like that. So, uh, okay. I think I covered everything that you wanted to know. One more thing, I knew I, I knew there was something I forgot. A lot of you have been asking about Sadie's car sickness. When I first got her, she would get sick every time we drove, well, until I started giving her Dramamine. But then every time we drove, I had to give her Dramamine, which pretty much knocked her out. It's kind of nice sometimes, to be honest with you. But no, she has not been car sick in a couple of months. Well, she threw up once. Just recently, she threw up, but that was only because I fed her in the morning. So with the car sickness, it was really important to not feed her in the morning. And that's why I said the training, uh, the hand training for breakfast, sometimes that can get a little loopy because if we're on the road, I can't feed her in the morning. And so by the time we stop, I don't want to have to go through training. I just want to feed her. And so sometimes I do put her food in a bowl now, but she hasn't done Dramamine in probably, I don't know, maybe two months. 
six weeks. It's been a long time since she's done any Dramamine, and uh, she's getting a lot more comfortable. She gets up, she sits up, she looks out the window. Sometimes she gets a little nervous depending on the road, and uh, she still like doesn't necessarily like. I was gonna say she doesn't necessarily like love like traveling and jumping in the rig but she is kind of doing that more now and uh, so yeah wait till you see some of the videos coming up she's really turning into quite the little travel dog so subscribe below and wait and you'll see she's been fun I hope you found that helpful and just remember if you ever have a question I've done over I think 400 free videos free videos so all the information you ever want to know about me my life my RV life or RV living or whatever you can probably find on my channel just go to the home page of my channel and uh, cross the navigation bar there's a spyglass or a search Thing. and you can go and search by keyword for any topic on my channel and you can find the answers to your questions so thank you all so much for hanging out with me Sadie and I really appreciate each and every one of you remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and check your notifications a lot of people are saying that they've gotten unsubscri unsubscribed and they're not getting notifications YouTube glitch again so be sure to check that and for everyone who watches my videos all the way through and shares them and tells your friends and family about them thank you all so much you help keep my videos and my channel alive and of course a special shout out to patrons as well who keep this a sustainable living for me but from both Sadie and me thank you so much for hanging out with us we really appreciate you we'll see you next time in the meantime be happy be free and be kind see you soon Say bye. What? Say bye. Bye. <laughs> See you later.